So it was recently pointed out to me that I don't have a video on switch case. So here's the video. All right, let's say that we have a imaginary function called fetch, which is going to return a random code. So we're simulating what would happen if you were doing an AJAX call to the server, you get back some sort of response. So I've created an array that's got 10 random response codes here. I'm going to pick one of them and send it back from this function. So if I run my code as it stands right now, what I get back is an object with a property called code and a property called text. The code has a number, text has a string. And each time I run this, I'm going to get a different value coming back. So it will randomly select one of those. I did this just to generate some data. Now I could, if I wanted to run different code based on the response code that I'm getting back from my imaginary server, I could use an if statement and I can write an if else else if else if else if else if else statement. So this big long statement. Switch case is intended to do the same sort of thing as a switch case as an if else statement, except it works best when you have a long list of possible values. You're looking at one thing in this case, the response object, and I want to look at the code that's inside of here. So whatever this number is, that's the one value that I'm looking at. And I have a whole bunch of possible returns. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do one thing if the response code is in the 200 range. If it's 304, I'll do another. If it's one of these 400 values, I'll do another thing. And if it's the 500s, I'll do something else and then I'll have a default case at the very end, just like the else statement at the end of an if, else if, else if, else if, else. At the very end of that, you get that one case that catches everything else. A switch case statement has the same sort of thing. So how do we write this? Well, like this. Keyword switch, then a set of parentheses. Inside here, you put the one value that you want to look at. I'm going to look at the response object and its code property. So that's this right here. Code, 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 whatever that number is. That's the one value that I'm going to be looking at. So every time this runs, I'm going to look at that value and do something different. Case 200. If the case that comes back, if the code that's re returned inside the response object is 200. If that's the value, then this is the code that I'm going to run. I will say console.log and let's just write out the response.txt. Yeah, that's a good thing to write. There we are. This worked. So, well, the 200s, they're going to be a very positive thing, so say all is good, and then the response. All right. Now that's about as basic as I can make the switch statement. Uh, I got a 400, it's not coming up, 201. Actually, I guess I could try this for a while before I hit the 200. There we are. All is okay. All is good, okay. That is the value that I'm writing out because this is matching this we can now put in other cases. What if it's 304? Then the code that I'm going to write is something to do with a redirect. And again, we can go through this, see how lucky we, lucky we are if we get the right one. Hey, there it is. Code 304, redirect not modified. So that's the status text this is the message that we're writing out. Now, I'll clear this out and do this a few more times. I want to get that 200 again. There, perfect. <laughs> the 200 code, you'll notice it's writing out both messages, all is good, and redirect. So as soon as you hit one condition instead of switch case statement, it will at that point run any code all the way through here. It doesn't matter how many other conditions I have. If I say case 400 is going to be something, K 
case 500 is going to be something and my 500 server error so if I got 200 it means that all four of these console log statements are going to actually run. I never exit from this condition. As soon as I find one good thing, it keeps going. Unless we come in here and we add break statements. The break statements are what tells it to exit from the switch case. There we are. As soon as it hits a break, it knows it's done and it can exit. So it comes down here to the very end of the switch case and moves on with whatever code we have after that. But that means we can leverage this whole idea of getting one proper answer, one thing that matches. I can list off now a bunch of them. So I can say, all right, if I got 200 or 201, 304 is my only 300, 4, 401, 403, 404, 405, I can list all of these together as cases and it will take this as the message to write if it gets any of these 400 cases, any of these values. 404 and case 405. Down here we've got 500 and case 503. There, now what I've done is I've grouped them together the 200s, the 300s, the 400s, the 500s, they're grouped together. If I get any of those 400s, this is the message that comes out. If I get any of the 200s, this is the message. Any of the 500s, this is the message. So we can group things together, and it's a lot quicker than writing an if statement with a bunch of or conditions, or ors and ands, and then the additional else if, else if, else if statements. At the very end, we want to make sure that we have a default condition console.log, and it's something that's not in our list, so we'll just write whatever came back from the server. Now this code could be anything at all. It doesn't have to be just console log statements. We can do anything we want. We can have as many lines of code as we want, but we're grouping things together like this. And let's add one more code in here to say if I got something that's out of the ordinary something that doesn't really exist, but let's say for whatever reason, we get this response, not a real code. There we go. So that is now a possibility to come back. I didn't handle that inside my code, and this is what the default is gonna handle. Those things that you weren't expecting. One four oh five two hundred two oh one three oh four. So you can see that it's sorting this out and it's only writing the one message. Just see if I can get the six hundred to show up here. There we are. Six hundred, not a real code. And that's our message that we console log. And that's a switch case statement. So when you have a long list of values. This is a quick and easy way that you can group them together and have code that runs based on those conditions. Hope that helps. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.